Okay, so um, my name is Mark Pickering. Um, as Bruce says, I'm with the University of Southampton. I'm the Impact Acceleration Manager for the Astronautics Research Group. And um, just briefly on my background, um, I did my PhD at the National Oceanography Centre and worked on high performance computing and climate change problems. Uh, then went on to work as a technical program manager in marine robotics and currently I'm involved uh, through the IRIS Centre of Excellence on a number of aerial robotics uh, projects. So, uh, I'm here today to give you an overview of the Astronautics Research Group and particularly their research specialisms. Um, so uh, I also uh, we'll flag up that uh, our head of group, uh, Scott Walker, or I can be contacted if anything catches your eye in the presentation, and um, we're happy to discuss forming collaborations and consortia. Um, and briefly, also just to say thank you to Louise, and as part of the uh, Space South Central uh, initiative, it's good to be able to uh, move between the different universities uh, involved. So the Astronautics Research Group uh, is um, a specialist in the more upstream side of technology, so the two Ewans from uh, Global Trust gave us a great uh, presentation on downstream. It's going to be focused more on the spacecraft bus and the satellite technology. So you can see across the group um, we have expertise on structures, space debris, uh, plasma, spacecraft propulsion, dynamical systems, uh, instrumentation, advanced materials and sustainable energy and optics. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more as I go through the presentation. So beyond these eight core academics in astronautics, um, they are part of the uh, aeronautics and astronautics department which was established in the 1950s um, and that department benefits from the synergy between the aeronautics and the astronautics side of things. Uh, importantly, that in itself is then uh, a part of space at Southampton, which covers uh, all of the space research or brings together all of the space research across multiple facu uh, faculties, so including Earth observation in the downstream side, um, also areas as diverse as uh, medicine and the effect of low gravitational environments on astronauts. So, coming back to astronautics, um, we have around 20 PhD students per year. Um, and our activities cover <coughs> research um, as well as teaching with around 200 undergraduate students um, and uh, the space uh, craft engineering um, undergraduate course uh, is one of the most well received of the Aero Astro programs. Um, we're also uh, internationally acknowledged for our short courses um, given to industry um, so uh, we've been training the likes of ESA and lots of other partners um, from the space sector in our short courses. Um, I attended one of those last year. Um, there are around 50 to 60 people from all over the UK and Europe and if you're looking to train your staff or get up to speed on um, space, craft, uh, space systems engineering then uh, I highly recommend that. Um, enterprise wise um, we consult to industry through the experts uh, at the university as well as offering access to a number of experimental facilities um, including vacuum chambers, uh, shaker tables, uh, thermal test chambers and plasma laboratories. So everything that you need to uh, test the stresses of the environment in space on the structures. So I'm now going to run you through uh, each of the eight academics. So uh, firstly, Professor Hugh Lewis has been working on the area of space uh, sustainability and space debris for a number of years. Uh, space debris through uh, modelling of the space debris with a model called DAMAGE, which is used to look at different scenarios of the evolution of the space debris field, um, as well as uh, making an impact through policy um, so Hugh advises to the UK government as well as to the UN. Dr Min Kwan Kim is an Associate Professor in Astronautics and focuses on research associated with plasma and applies this in a number of different areas. So in terms of plasma propulsion, um, Min Kwan's uh, uh, vacuum arc thrusters have recently uh, in January been launched on a SpaceX uh, Falcon 9 
um, rockets, and uh, that's looking at methods of deorbiting cube satellites so that we don't build that um, space debris population any more than we have to. Um, and uh, he's also applying plasma research in the area of hyperso uh, hypersonics and aerothermodynamics in terms of re-entry um, re conditions. Um, and in terms of uh, non-thermal plasma, the technology is used for decontamination um, in um, military environments, um, as well as in the medical sector, and the plasma technologies were found to be highly effective against the COVID-19 uh, virus. So, um, Ming Kwan is also establishing with colleagues a, uh, a spin-out company, um, which is now up and running, and is looking to uh, take these uh, mid-TRL products into uh, the commercial market, um, in the medical realm, uh, defense, and also in terms of um, developing countries and uh, decontaminating water supplies in remote environments. Dr. Charlie Ryan is our uh, electric uh, plasma propulsion specialist and uh, focuses on small and low cost plasma thrusters, um, as well as electrospray devices and novel applications of them. Um, Charlie's also been looking into uh, greener uh, fuels such as hydrogen peroxide um, and at the moment has been focusing on increasing the specific uh, impulse of uh, hull thrusters for applications and missions beyond low earth orbit um, further out into space. Dr. Alexander Bittig is a um, mathematician who is applying his uh, expertise in the area of space. So firstly in terms of astrodynamics to designing the trajectories, particularly where you have um, uncertainties propagating through long and complex trajectories. This also plays into mission analysis um, for low thrust missions and also novel mission concepts in relation to asteroid capture and so on. Um, Alex works at the fundamental level as well, um, developing the uh, numerics and numerical methods that are required to undertake some of this complex modelling, as well as um, working in gravitational physics. Uh, Dr. Hannah Skulska lawrence is our payloads and instrumentation specialist. Hannah's focus is around miniaturisation of instruments and um, this is the full design life cycle from design to manufacture, delivery and operation of the instruments and um, also looking at the analysis of the data then returned from the instrument but with an understanding of how that has been built um, and its strengths and limitations. So um, Hannah's uh, instruments have been used on planetary surface landers uh, on the surface of Mars and she's also working to develop atmospheric probes for moons such as Europa. Um, Hannah's recently won funding from, Europe, uh, from the UK Space Agency um, to develop surface enhanced Raman spectrometry to look for biosignatures of, um, in, for, look for biosignatures in icy worlds and on the surface of Mars. Um, Dr. Susmita Nazca um, is an advanced material specialist. Um, in particular, she looks at using um, machine learning and digital twins to um, explore the parameter space of composite uh, materials, so that could be bimetals or polymers, um, and looking at applying those uh, at multiple scales and also for uh, multiple functionalities. So um, using the machine learning you can explore the parameter space, refine the composite and then uh, indeed test it in a laboratory environment. Um, so Sismita is um, developing a couple of funding proposals at present and is interested to find um, industry partners uh, to look at scaling and uh, applying these uh, these materials in um, areas such as uh, spacecraft systems, but also uh, renewable energy and wind farms. So if you're interested to get in touch on partnering, partnering and um, guiding the end use of such an application, please do get in touch with us. Dr. Nina Vaida um, is an optics and materials design specialist for um, sustainable space-based systems. 
uh, in particular novel and ultra lightweight fabrication systems for space-based solar, um, and also designing films for the surfaces of mirrors and uh, parts of lenses in telescopes, um, as well as being interested in some of the fundamentals of the wave matter interactions at a quantum level, which underpin uh, the materials developments and Nina is involved in the uh, UK Space Energy Initiative um, which uh, is run, uh, comes out of the UK government and has also been uh, in receipt of um, some of their net zero innovation program funding recently. And finally uh, Dr Scott Walker who I mentioned earlier is our head of group and has worked over the last couple of decades in a number of aspects of the spacecraft structure, from deployable structures, structural dynamics, morphing structures, <coughs> deorbit devices, um, attitude control and tumbling, and designing components and testing them uh, from a component up to a system level. Um, currently, Scott focuses mostly on multifunctional structures, and in particular, um, additive man manufacturing and 3D printing. Um, for components such as um, uh, space, spacecraft systems panels that also act in a um, shielding capacity. And down on the right you can see a uh, CubeSat that was entirely 3D printed. Um, so with that I will wrap up and um, just to thank you for listening and uh, <coughs> it's a little bit blue on blue there but um, the contact details for myself and Scott, so if you uh, are interested in collaborating or working with any of our academics, please get in touch with uh, both of us and uh, we can explore that further. <laughs>